If you like to have an alcoholic beverage to relax at the end of a long day of motorcycle travel, uh, whether you're camping or hoteling it, I would suggest that instead of a bulky six or 12 or a case of beer and having to haul ice and have a cooler, uh, that you look into uh, some bourbon or whiskey or something of that nature. And in this video, we are going to cover four different low budget bourbons that won't break the bank and it'll take you a long way. Stay tuned. All right, so let's talk about bourbon whiskey and low budget bourbon whiskey. Uh, now I don't have everything in front of me here that I'm gonna talk about, but I'm going to give you uh, several selections, uh, again, both in front of me and some of which I don't necessarily have right here. Uh, everything will be under $30 and most will be under $20. Um, so you don't have to spend a lot of money to get some decent bourbon. I've spent a lot of money in the past on really, really good bourbon, but you know, when it comes to a daily drinker, when it comes to uh, you're out on a camping trip, you're out on a motorcycle trip, uh, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of money. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, over here to my left, I have some very old Barton and it is 86 proof. And before I go any further, let me mention that any of these prices that I give you, uh, they are prices, uh, they're current prices, uh, where I live at may be different where you live at, and they are all uh, we are focusing on. Um, we are focusing on fifths, or otherwise known as 750 milliliters. Uh, that's what all these size bottles are, except one of them, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So, on the very left here, we have a bottle of Vario Barton. Now, this particular bottle has an age statement on it. You'll see right here. It says six years right there at the top. Uh, and that's because this specific bottle of very old Barton is a very old bottle. Uh, this bottle was bought back in about 1990 by my father. Uh, and when he passed away, I, this was down on the bar. And so I've just had it here in my collection. And uh, I drink a little bit of, of it every, every now and then. But regardless of that, uh, Very Old Barton is still made today. Very Old Barton is, uh, is a decent bourbon and uh, it's not age stated anymore. And it would probably, I believe the rule of thumb on Very Old Barton is it is um, known to be somewhere between four and six years old. Um, so, you know, they don't age state it anymore. Therefore, they can't charge as high a price uh, as if they age state it. But anyway, Vario Barton, six year old, uh, but it's 86 proof. So this is one of the lower proofs of bourbon. To be bourbon, you have to be at least 80 proof. Um, so 86 proof, and this is really smooth, uh, probably because it is, um, you know, been sitting for so long. You know, once you get a little oxidation to the uh, to the bourbon itself, it mellows out a lot than if you just open a fresh bottle of bourbon. Uh, so, uh, current price is on Vario Barton. An 86 proof bottle is about $13. And you can get a 100 proof bottled in bond Vario Barton, a bottle of that for also approximately $13. So, if you like a little higher proof, I'd go for the 100 proof bottled in bond. Next here we have Maker's Mark. I'm sure lots and lots of people have heard of Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark, uh, the regular stuff here, uh, comes in at 90 proof, and, and a bottle of it uh, goes for about $24. You can find it on sale sometimes for you know right under $20, uh, $19, $18.99, stuff like that. But right now here in my area, uh, Lexington, Kentucky, it's going for about, a bottle is about $24. 
And again, this is a weeded bourbon. So this has uh, mainly wheat in it. It doesn't have any rye. Uh, and it's the wheat is supposed to make it smoother. Now that's not always the case, but that's the whole reasoning behind having weeded bourbon. Uh, our third bottle here is a bottle of uh, Green Label Heaven Hill. And you'll see here, it is also age dated at six years old. Um, this particular bottle uh, is only sold in the state of Kentucky. If you ever see a, uh, a green labeled Heaven Hill bottle, you will only find those in the state of Kentucky or somebody has bought it from the state of Kentucky and taken it outside. But the, the green label is only sold uh, in Kentucky. You have a white label uh, that's sold everywhere across the country and I believe also a black label that's sold everywhere across the country. And uh, this particular bottle of uh, Heaven Hill uh, is $13, cost me $13. Um, and again, it's 90 proof. Your, um, your 80 proof, the Heaven Hill does have 80 proof, I believe uh, both white label and black label. And I'm not really sure what the difference is, but uh, I, think there, I think there could be a proof difference in there. They could have an 86 proof in there somewhere. But uh, those 80, 86 proof, uh, they, they range about $10. So Heaven Hill, pretty good value. Heaven Hill also makes Elijah Craig bourbon. Uh, and a lot of times it's all, all this stuff is a lot of times is a, if it comes from one distillery, it's the same juice. It's just how long it's aged and which warehouse uh, that it's aged in makes the difference of how it tastes. So again, $13 here. Uh, you can probably get a, a bottle of uh, white label for about uh, $10. Uh, they, Heaven Hill does have a bottle bottled in bond, uh, 100 proof, but they think awful highly of that uh, because it is age stated at seven years and that sells for you know a lot of money. That's about $56. So you know we're talking budget bourbon here. And so uh, have, this is a really good bourbon, Heaven Hill is, um, in, in my opinion. Uh, next, we have a Jim Beam product called Old Tub, and this is also a 100 proof bourbon, and it's bottled in bond. Old Tub is a name uh, of a bourbon uh, from, I think, the 1900s, 1910s, 1920s, somewhere in there that Jim Beam bought the rights to, and of course is, you know, rebottling uh, that, that name uh, and I believe Old Tub at that time was also bottled in bond, and so they're making it bottled in bond again. And just so you know, bottled in bond means that it has to be produced by one distillery in one distilling season, has to be at least 100 proof. Uh, and I think there's one more thing, and I'm forgetting about it. Oh, and it has to be at least four years old. Uh, so anything bottled in bond is always four years old it's always produced by one distiller in one distilling season uh, and of course it's a hundred proof uh, something like this heaven hill here that we had uh, this could be batched this could be blended with a bunch of uh, barrels from different um, different uh, um, ages as long as the minimum age is six years old they could use eight-year-old barrels. They could use seven-year-old barrels. They don't just use six-year-old barrels. The six-year-old is the minimum that it can be. Uh, the uh, maker's mark here, uh, again, this one is 90 proof. It's, it's not uh, bonded, so it's not 100 proof. So therefore, we can't count on it being uh, four years old. But if you're just looking at the color, it is probably closer to four years old than uh, anything. The minimum age for bourbon is two years, and that would be called Kentucky Straight Bourbon. So we get to our last bottle here, and this is the Early Times Bottled in Bond. Again, it's 100 proof. Uh, it is, uh, I believe, Early Times, let's make sure, yes, Early Times is the distiller itself. So, and you can see it kind of has... Uh, the older font here, the older uh, font uh, labeling that they would have done back in the day. Early times, the regular early times has a little bit different. Uh, oh, you know what? 
back to the old tub real quick. I did not say how much uh, the old tub costs. The old tub costs eighteen dollars for a fifth. Early time, back to the early times here. Uh, the early times again. It has a regular bottle, and the regular bottles that aren't bottled in bond and have this this uh, old style label here. I believe they run approximately about sixteen dollars. So again, good budget bourbon. But this budget this budget bourbon here is probably this is the most expensive in front of me here. Uh, it is twenty six dollars for this, and part of that is because. This is a one liter bottle. These are all bought 750 mil or fifth bottles. This is actually a one liter bottle, so you're actually getting uh, 250 mils more than any of these bottles. And so that's what justifies uh, the, the $26, of course, along with it being uh, bottled in bond, 100 proof, and at least four years old, obviously. Now, there are some, I, I picked out four others uh, to put on a list of budget bourbons, uh, and I think you'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll pop up some pictures in here as well when I talk about them. The first one is the Evan Williams Black, or I'm sorry, the Evan Williams White, uh, which it's a white label, and it's 100 proof bonded, and you can get that for $17. Again, 100 proof bourbon, you know that it's at least four years old, comes from one distillery in one distilling season, uh, and it's, uh, you know, um, measured at 100 proof. Hard to beat, Evan Williams, white label bonded at $17. The next is another Evan Williams, and also Evan Williams is also a product of the Heaven Hill Distillery. So Evan Will Williams 1783 uh, is a 90 proof, and it's considered a small batch bourbon, uh, and it's $16. Uh, again, really good budget bourbon, uh, and you got to remember when we're talking budget bourbons, we're not some, talking something that's knocking your socks off. That's the smoothest of the smooth, the 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 brown sugary of the brown sugar, the caramely of the caramel. We're just talking good, regular budget bourbons. Uh, so the Evan Williams 1783 again, which I don't have it right here in front of me. I'll put a picture in. Uh, it is a very good budget bourbon as well. Uh, for those that like a little bit more proof on their bourbon, because we've only been talking up to 100 proof, there is a Jim Beam uh, product. So it's made by Jim Beam, but it's called Old Granddad 114, and it's exactly what you're thinking. It's 114 proof. Uh, now, the one caveat to that is that bourbon is a high rye mash bill. Uh, instead of using a, a, a low amount of uh, rye and wheat and your barley and things like that, uh, you they are using a very high rye. I think it's at least 20% rye. Could be a little bit more. I'm not sure exactly. I'm not. I'm not a big high rye bourbon uh, person. So uh, that's why I don't have any in front of me. Uh, but I know lots of people that like it. So, O Granddad 114 and O Granddad 114 comes in at $26 a fifth. I know that's a little bit more than some people might want to spend, but again, uh, really good and still budget bourbon. And then my last and final uh, budget bourbon, and uh, Don and the guys know about this because I had this at the uh, uh, Moto Giant Camp and Cook Rally, is Elijah Craig, the regular Elijah Craig. It's 94 proof, so it kind of hits a sweet spot between the 90, which some people think it's not enough, and 100, which some people can think is a little too much. I, I go all over the range. Uh, I like Sometimes I like high proof, sometimes I like you know, a low, lower proof, but 94 hits a sweet spot, and Elijah Craig, which is also a Heaven Hill product, uh, is a really good budget bourbon. It comes in at $26 for the regular stuff. Um, you There there are some different versions of, uh, of the Elijah Craig. There's a full proof, um, uh, no, I'm sorry, a barrel proof. Very, very expensive, uh, you know, unless that's your, your jam, I wouldn't, you know, you know, expect you to buy something like that. But the regular Elijah Craig is good stuff. Well, I hope you have enjoyed uh, this uh, little bourbon tour of uh, 
some of the budget bourbons that I have and maybe uh, something uh, on my list, uh, either in front of me or what I've talked about, uh, might pique your interest and you might be interested in uh, getting uh, you know, uh, one of those. Because I'm telling you right now, one of these bottles goes a long way, goes a lot longer than a six pack of beer and it's a whole lot easier to carry and you don't have to refrigerate it. So take that for what's worth. Have a good day. Oh, and the one thing that I forgot to, to tell you guys that I'm breaking this up into two videos. We're going to do the taste test, the blind taste test in another video.